well i'm going to go ahead and make a more detailed video uh, in a few days but i think um, convicting the murderer has been broadcast and i think the shit has hit the fan right now people are suddenly revising their opinion they're saying we didn't know this we didn't know that avery is guilty right now let me put a few things in perspective right now okay and this is from the time i watched making a murderer and there were certain things i accepted when i watched making a murderer and i'll tell you what i accepted the first thing i accepted was that at a certain level yes steven is a sick depraved man because i didn't need so many incidents spanning three episodes to convince me that he had a problem and he needed counseling just one incident was enough wherein they said that he stopped his sister in law and he threatened her with an with a gun on an open road when her kid was in the back seat that was enough for me to understand and accept that yes he was unhinged at a certain level and he needed counseling but i accepted it and i proceeded from that point onwards accepting the fact that yes here is a man who is prone to fits of violence who is prone to go ahead and take an extreme act when he is pushed to a certain point and yes i do consider it a very extreme aggressive sick action on his part to threaten a lady or a woman in the middle of the road be it anything be it for any kind of a threat when the kid is at the back seat that was enough for me i didn't need a major like a kind of a avalanche of information regarding steven avery that he was doing wife swapping he was into a lot of uh, um, objectionable stuff when it came to sex this that i think it was quite apparent and quite discernible and um, when i did watch making a murderer the first two seasons the first thing i did was uh, i did a background check of uh, all these things i went ahead and researched on them there's a lot of information about steven avery if you actually go ahead and search and search properly because there's a lot of rubbish and there's a lot of good stuff which you understand which is very detailed which is very sensitive and which is very important to understand this case but despite all this information please try and concentrate on one thing and one thing only and that is whether steven avery killed teresa holback and cremated her body whole in the backyard of his house this is the thing which you need to think about i do understand that convicting a murder candace owens will say no i am not talking about the crime i am just showing you three episodes of simpsons you know watch it i i just want you to get a background of how he is because you see making a murderer did not go ahead and show these things to the discerning researcher he has already found out about all of these things regarding barb regarding all the avery brothers everything so by extension i would also say the gene runs very strong in the family so if steven has this kind of a disposition then even in his family tree it can pass down to bobby daisy too right and he can actually go ahead and search a lot of objectionable stuff on the computer which the state police would love to hide now think about this premise you've got this man who's a little unhinged who's a little sick who's a little depraved he's spent 18 years in jail he has sent strange letters to his wife who is really going crazy with her five kids right and then he's had a had a relationship with a minor girl 
and he set free because he didn't commit the crime for which he was convicted now think about this and the police are really the state is in a in a fix because they have to shell out 36 million dollars right now and the opportunity presents itself on their lap wherein they can actually frame him and get him and they don't have to shell out 36 million dollars which would probably bankrupt the whole state and get him back to where they think he belongs wouldn't you go ahead and explore that opportunity more so when you have a state body and you have a lot of individuals comprising that state body who are accused of committing heinous acts which have put him in bars for 9 or 10 more years because this information consider- concerning stephen avery when he was convicted in the first instance that came into the hands of the state police at least 9 to 10 years earlier but they chose to ignore it now you've got a lot of individuals right a lot of individuals in the manitowoc police department who are accountable who are responsible for putting this man behind bars for 8 or 9 more years and the state has to shell out 36 million dollars 36 million dollars to the sick depraved person right for a crime he didn't commit think about it he's sick and depraved so he gets convicted of a crime now for the first crime let's not get it wrong we all know that he's innocent he's sick and depraved well he should have committed that crime also but what do we come to know that he is not committed the crime and through dna evidence which is unflinching which cannot be questioned he is set free a person who the state police want that they want him in jail number 1 and number 2 they have made a serious error about it. So by that premise what i'm trying to say is that if you can believe the fact that a sick depraved person did not assault a woman on a beach for the first crime then even for teresa holbach's murder you should also consider that this can also happen because for the first crime he was innocent right he was sick and depraved then also right so for the second crime how does that whole all this massive information it's nothing it's useless because it does not prove anything it just goes to prove that even if you build a major a uh, kind of uh, case or story for a man who says that who's got questionable practice who's got ill motives sick and depraved mind etc 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 it just goes to prove and show that when you are going ahead and putting him in jail you look into that act or that crime investigate that crime and find out whether he truly committed it or not that is the lesson or the moral of the story here so convicting my murderer contributing three episodes and saying la 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 land la la land ha 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 steven avery should go to hell this that yes that is later on god will god will punish him but the point here is let's get back to basics let's get back to details has he killed teresa holback or not let me let me try and kind of make you all understand that how listen i'm i search the truth i do not go ahead and i don't i'm not a steven a very fan there's there, there are some people who were trying to think that i'm a steven a very fan i'm not a steven a very fan i'm not a fan i am searching for the truth what exactly happened on that day and i am doing it because of teresa holback i'm not doing it for anyone 
I want to know what happened to this beautiful life and as it was extinguished and I want to know what happened because this is not the truth. The theory, the narrative Kratz has cooked up, it's stupid, it's beyond, it, it just doesn't fit. Just like the glove didn't fit, right? And you just set an, a, a guilty man free, here nothing fits. Forget gloves. Here nothing fits at all. In this homicide, nothing fits at all. And it is very important that we try and understand the facts. Instead of shouting and screaming and fighting within each other, we try and understand the facts. What are the facts? Try and understand that. Now, let's look at Kratz's theory. Like, let's look at his theory. And I will be making another video and I'll tell you how in Bobby's confession, we actually have hints of the person who actually killed Teresa Holbeck. I have been able to, it, it took me a lot of time to figure it out, but I have been able to find out and understand exactly who killed Teresa Holbeck. And I cannot go ahead and it's cannot be a direct accusation, but I will just state the facts and you will all understand why it is. It's, I, I'm going to make another video on that. But let's look at Kratz's narrative and let's try and understand how it is so mothballed. Okay. And in this video, basically what I'm trying, what I'll be trying to uh, show here is that if Stephen Avery had committed the crime, had actually gone ahead and murdered Teresa Hallback, there is no reason for him to put her in the back of the RAV4. Okay. There is no way, there is no angle in the, because I have done the murder reconstruction because I was just trying to go ahead and see if actually Stephen Avery killed Teresa Hallback. Putting her in the back of the RAV4, how can it be incorporated in the whole reconstruction theory and it just doesn't fit. So, I will tell you the reasons. Of course, the guilters will not believe me. I know. I know you guys won't believe me. But you just think, you know, uh, when we were um, studying in law school, our professors used to say the first thing you do is you do reconstruction of crime. So I remember one of my friends asked him that how do we do reconstruction of crime? You know, like... Uh, uh, we don't know the character, we don't know the character of the person, we don't know how he's going to behave or react. So our professor said that you never know what he, how he's going to behave, you can't, right, you can't, you can't actually say that. You put yourself in his shoes and you, fig you, you, you try and see if you murdered the person, how you would go ahead and try and hide the crime. That's the best way you can reconstruct the crime. Otherwise, there's no other way you can do it. And the more you do it, and then you try and uh, balance it with his disposition, his character, and you try and see how the police uh, theory fits, that's the way you go ahead and reconstruct the timelines for the crime and everything. That's the best way to do it. Everybody might say, you know, I'm not Stephen Avery. I know I'm not that sick person, right? Everybody has an evil in him. Every one of us does. And sometimes you just need one small flicker. You know, one small flame and it, it can just go. You don't know. It, 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 it's a very fragile balance. Okay. Very excellent men, good men, noble men have turned evil within a second. Right. So, it's not something which is impossible, but you need to try and put yourself in Stephen Avery's shoes and try and understand in what way this crime could have happened and just concentrate on one aspect because the most important aspect of this whole crime is the RAV4 with the blood of Teresa Hallback in the back and the blood of Stephen Avery in the front. Basically, the planted blood of Stephen Avery in the front, right? So, that is the only thing which is keeping Stephen Avery in jail. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. All the other is circumstantial evidence which can be easily 
uh, easily easily explained okay so this is the clincher Teresa Hallback's blood at the back of the car Stephen Avery's blood in the front of the car the front of the car yes the guilters will say it cannot happen anything front of the car blood is planted now of course people will not accept it but simple point man if you are turning an ignition of a car right you don't smear it with your finger like this you know you're not giving a vote or something you know and you say here's my blood here's the ignition key you can't when you when it's dripping blood from your hand if you turn the key the blood will fall down uh beside the gear or anything the blood cannot stick to the ignition beside and let me be one more let me make one more thing very clear here is where the contradiction comes you accept the fact that she was killed in the garage and steven avery cleaned the garage so well that you don't even find a shred of dna and blood but when he goes into the car he's so stupid he turns the key and he smears the blood around the ignition like this hey hello here's my blood take it it just doesn't work out because if he's careful about something there he cannot be stupid about something in the car right think don't behave like a fool guilters think anyways i know you will not accept it because to you star 6 7 is more important than anything else okay so this is the first point steven avery's blood in the front of the car is planted it is it is beyond doubt it is planted it's it's i i know you cannot prove it that's why i said the denny test does not work when the state police are involved when they are they involved a massive cover up job a massive frame framing of steven avery judiciary will not accept it how can the judiciary accept that yes their own people the state police they the judiciary operates on a premise that the state police has done their job otherwise how are they going to go ahead and take a decision on a case they can't but when you know that there is a probable suspicion something has happened you should not use the denny test that is my point then the edmunds test is more important which i have explained in the earlier videos because that concentrates more on the crime rather than how the crime was committed or trying to find another denny suspect which is which is difficult to do so because you've got the state police in world so they are not going to go and then search for any other denny suspects and if at all there are any other evidence pointing to the denny suspects they will try and destroy it which happened with the computer for bobby daisy we don't know i'm not saying bobby daisy is the killer but i'm just saying they are not going to search for it and also it's going it's not a big deal right so hey let's put that aside so this is the front of the car the rav4 which i'm talking about this is where cracks kept on saying that it doesn't matter if the key is planted it is the most important part is that the blood was there in the car more important point is jury un- jury mis- was absolutely wrong in consider that because the key is very important because the key was found in every trailer which it's it's a very simple chain cracks made the key was planted in the trailer so it linked steven to the car in the car the blood was found in the front steven's blood was found in the front and teresa's blood was found in the back so that's how he connected so the key was very important which the jury didn't understand the jury said okay fine because mr kratz with his meow meow voice said so it was very unfortunate that the jury did not consider that but how will they consider it because we've already had a press conference of kratz with lurid details of brendan daisy's confession which is not even admitted in the trial so these are all the things now from here i am going to start explaining let's try and explore kratz theory right kratz theory is that because i'm trying to reconstruct it 
based on his words and whatever he has written and whatever was delivered in the testimony right cratch theory is teresa went to the door of steven avery to talk to him he lured her in somehow somehow he got her in and then after that he committed a series of acts which finally led to the burning up of her body at the back of the house so the primary burn pit again you remember that is the very burn pit which in itself is a crazy theory okay so first point teresa hallback comes to the door of steven avery talks to him steven avery somehow gets her into the trailer steven avery does not doesn't have any kind of an opportunity to put her in the back of the raft for here understood so basically steven has lured her in after luring her in she's committing all these acts and everything then somehow brendan daisy joins him even though that is a completely coached inference which has been point, uh, planted by vegard and fastbender because earlier the first testimony of brendan daisy said that he was in the house Stephen called him, and he went to the garage, and he saw Teresa Hallback at the back of the car, fully clothed. She was dead, but she was fully clothed. That was the first testimony of Brendan Dacey, if you remember. The first, in the first ten minutes, this is what he said, and that was the best, con- best part of the confession. Actually, he said the right thing at that point of time. And then what happened was, Fassbender and Weigert got in, and then they started saying Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales, this, that, and that. And then poor Brendan Dacey, he went completely berserk, and he put in kiss the girls, this, that. It was complete madness. So, at this point of time, Stephen Avery has not put Teresa Hall back in the back of the Rav Four, right? Because Stephen Avery has brought Teresa Hall back into the house, right? And there he is committing these crimes. These he's assaulting her. Brendan Dacey joins him. Then, at that point of time, he she's alive. I'm quite. mystified to understand she is screaming or i don't know like how they have bound her because this is a time between afternoon and evening this is the time range and nobody is hearing her nothing is happening and in that room she is bound by probably four handcuffs or so because that is the way her body was stretched out as per brandon dacey's confession but we just find one handcuff for uh, in steven avery said so how do how do you bind the other ones and there is no evidence in the trailer which suggests in any way that teresa hallback was held in that trailer first point now after all of this brendan daisy takes her to the garage right i am giving a little bit of the benefit of the doubt to the uh, uh prosecution that steven takes her car and puts it in the garage right but there's no way you can actually place raf ford in that garage you could not place it but still i'm giving the benefit of the doubt that steven somehow takes some time out and brendan daisy at that time is completely unattended in that house what was the time i don't know but brendan daisy in his confession has never said that that steven went out and brought the raf four into the garage at that point of time what must have happened is he must have cut his finger or something and the blood spilled but yeah he kept he kind of put in an encircling blood beside the ignition key and the car is brought into the garage correct fine closes the i don't know i am not sure about the garage door maybe he closes the garage door so that no one can see it then brendan daisy and teresa hallback bring her into the garage 
how do they bring her into the garage is the garage connected with the house again i'm not sure about that i do not know the plan i'm giving the benefit of the doubt maybe in from inside the house it is linked so he brings teresa hall back into the garage to me bringing her into the garage makes no sense i don't know why he will bring teresa hall back into the garage it doesn't make sense again this is something which fastbender and pegart has planted in him so that he can get a confession he can they can build a credible story because they need to put the body in the car okay now what happens is they are doing everything to her here in the garage why it makes no sense because the garage to a certain extent is an open location from where the her cries can be heard by the people around the house because some people have already come back if you are looking at the timelines watching prison break or something which was already stated but they went ahead and brought her into the garage so the very fact of bringing teresa hall back into the garage and shooting her makes no sense because if you are steven overy and you are really going ahead and committing heinous acts etc you would rather keep her in the trailer than in the garage because it involves two acts which are risky in itself number 1 taking the car and putting it into the garage because some people can see you doing that secondly bringing teresa hall back into the garage i am not sure whether he brought him in from the house into the garage or from the inside the house there is a certain uh, kind of a passage or something which can bring her into the garage whatever it is bringing her into the garage makes no sense there i believe they do commit a lot more acts and then she shot she shot by steven overy and then she's put into a creeper and then she's carted to a burn pit and burnt whole that is the theory right so where did he place her body into the back of the rav4 when krat says that when all these acts were being committed he heard a noise and he thought that someone had come so he opened the rafford and put teresa hall back in the back of the car does it make sense because if he was scared and if the police had really come and they would have knocked him then why would he put him in the back of the rafford which is the likeliest place to search if the police discovered him because the rav4 is the car where um, uh, teresa hallback it's teresa hallback's car so that will be the first car which will which will be searched and think about the act look at the act you have to open the back door of the rav4 and then you have to put her in to the uh, at the back of the car if it was done it would have involved a certain degree of effort and which brendan daisy would have stated in his confession if you listen very clearly to his confession he does not mention anywhere that steven avery while all these acts were being committed in the garage they went ahead and put her in the back of the rav4 it was more of a planted thing they 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 tried to kind of again conjure up this answer from him so that they could place Teresa Hall back at the back of the car, but putting Teresa Hall back at the back of the Rav Four. If Stephen Haveri has committed the murder, makes no sense. Be it at any time or place, right from the origin of the crime till the till her death, it makes no sense. Because at the very beginning. Crack's theory is based on the fact that Teresa Hallback walks up to his door and that is where Stephen Avery lures lures her in or does something threatens her in to his house so that in that part 
he has not placed Teresa Hall back in the car of uh, back of the RAV4. Correct. She has not. He has not done it. Second part. Are we suggesting that after the crime is committed and when we are going into the garage in broad daylight or evening when people are around, he and Bobby uh, Brendan Daisy, uh, uh, Brendan Daisy are going to carry Teresa Hall back at the back of the RAV4 and then take the car into the garage and then again take her out and do it crazy theory again can't be done third option they go into the garage they carry the body into the garage there a lot of other acts are committed and then suddenly the police he hears a noise or somebody is coming so what do i do oh hello brendan open the door let's chuck her into the back of the car Knowing fully well that that is the first thing which will be searched if they are discovered. Doesn't. Doesn't fit. There is no. Angle. From where Stephen Avery. Would have put the body of Teresa Hall back. At the back of the RAV4. If he had actually committed the crime. It would have been easier for him. Let me go ahead and propose this theory. If he had committed the crime, if he had committed the crime in the trailer, the first thing he would have done is he would have kept the body there. Definitely. He would have taken the RAV4 somewhere uh, a little within the, uh, uh, the crowd of all the cars which he has and camouflaged it a little bit. He wouldn't have taken it to a corner and kept it and hid it with branches. He would have rather done it within with all the cars that which are there secondly then he would have arranged a vehicle from where he could have another vehicle where he could have transported the body from his trailer into that car and taken it somewhere far enough to actually go ahead and probably dispose of the body that was the best way to go about again it's a very wrong thing to say but i'm just trying to make you all understand this is the way Stephen Avery would have done something if he had killed Teresa Hallback. But since he has not killed him, that's why this whole story, which is so stupid and so ridiculous and so absurd, had to be cooked up by the prosecution in order to convince the jury. And the jury unfortunately got convinced because you've had a press conference already. Which is, which is based on the uh, confession of Bobby, uh, 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 Brendan Daisy. With all these lurid details filled in, they say, no, fine, he, he must have killed her. Listen, I'm a Hindu, I'm an Indian, right? And we do cremate our, our dead, you know. One of the first things which got me interested in this case was when I saw the body decomposition of uh, Teresa Hallback. I mean to say the bones and everything. And I have been through a lot of deaths. We actually go to the burning hearts. We have an electric crematorium which actually burns the body for four to five hours straight. So we actually know how long it takes for a body to burn so that what remains are literally ashes or some sort of bones or something like that right i'm not a fire expert but i can tell you this much from practical experience whatever i wo i saw of teresa hallback's bones there like it's impossible it's absolutely impossible that uh, stephen avery could have burnt her body whole at the back of his house in that burn pit in an open air with just some tire irons or gasoline it just uh, can't do that kind of damage to a human body it was burnt more intensely and definitely in a in a closed area i would say and uh, that uh, i believe that is very important in because surrounding that area manitobic and that randstad query that area there must be a place where it still bears evidence of that cremation or that burning and police should search that area 
still it should bear evidence even after 10 or 12 years you cannot destroy that place or maybe there's a place where probably animals are burnt or something and you need to try and find that primary burn pit the primary burn pit is not behind the avery house and it cannot be burnt whole it's impossible Cratch would rather make you believe that yes, with a hacksaw, with something, they cut the body of Teresa Hallback at the back of the garage, this and that. Where is the evidence? You cannot go ahead and cut a body, dismember the body in a garage and not leave even one shred of DNA evidence. And if you don't, that is just goes to show that how thorough and how professional Stephen Avery is. And he has cleaned up that scene of crime or that garage. But he's stupid enough when he actually turns the indignation key of uh, Teresa Hallback's car. He does not actually go ahead and his cut finger, it's dripping blood, right? He takes the ignition dashboard and he just smears it in this. Here's my blood. Follow the cookie. Hansel and Gretel. It just can't happen. It's crazy. It just doesn't happen like that. It's a, it's a crazy theory. You, you just look at the ignition dashboard and that's a dead giveaway that... It must have been done with a with a cotton bud or something. People were asking me that you know that tube was open. They did an they did an EBTDS test or something. That means the swab um, had to be put in. So then you understand the blood has been disturbed. I think it's a very stupid theory because when you take the blood, you don't need to dip the blood with the uh, uh, cotton or anything. You can just take the blood and you can just pour it. That's it. You can override the EBTDA test if you just pour it on a cotton bud. Because if you pour it, there is no kind of contact between the EBTDA buds and uh, the, the, the things, the, the dabbing uh, tools with the blood. So when you take the bottle, if you just pour it, the blood will fall and it will fall exactly on the cotton. So there is no contact. So that very theory based on which that, yes, there has been no contact and uh, that part, it, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it, it's nothing, it's stupid. Because you can, you can have the simplest of methods to override all these uh, things. You see, man, again, I, I know I'm stupid, but I come from India, right? I'm a lawyer. And I was a lawyer, sorry. I'm not a lawyer still now. Uh, I I used to study criminal law, so I know how a criminal's mind functions. And yes, Stephen Avery might be a very bad person, might be a very evil person, might be the worst man on earth. He's a monster. But what we do need to understand is before you do character assassination, also understand that he was convicted of a crime which he did not commit. A very heinous act. So for that act also, all these background premises didn't work. Right? Which I pointed out. So even for the second crime, which is so questionable and which has got so many loopholes, all we are asking for is a retrial. We are not asking you to set him free. We are asking for a retrial. Test the evidence. Test the newfound evidence. Test the witnesses. We are just asking for a retrial. That is all we are asking for. And if America does not allow it, if US does not allow it, then I'll have to say your justice system, your legal principles, they are based on certain... Uh, they are just not considering logical facts you are actually not taking into consideration your own criminal jurisprudence you can only convict a man for murder if you know that his guilt has been proved beyond reasonable doubt and here there is a lot of doubt surrounding the key which was found in the trailer it was found in the seventh search doubt the blood of Stephen Avery was found in the front. Teresa Hallback's blood was found in the back. There is no way in the reconstruction of the crime which actually goes ahead and presupposes that yes, Avery would have had any kind of uh, advantage by putting Teresa Hallback at the back of the uh, lab for. 
If he did commit the murder of Teresa Hallback in his trailer, it makes no sense for him to put Teresa Hallback's body at the back of the car from any conceivable angle at any time when he has actually gone ahead and committed the murder. Not even one instance. If you if you just go ahead and thread the whole timeline, it doesn't work out. Cratch would make you believe that yes, in the garage he was dismembering her, he was talking to her, even though that's not clear. Sometimes he's saying he's dismembering, but he knows that he doesn't know uh, know how to prove it because he doesn't have the tools, he cannot prove the blood or the DNA had been there in the garage. So he just gives subtle hints. So to him, he's like. Uh, uh, Stephen Avery has taken him to uh, uh, her to the garage and suddenly he's cutting her or he's killing her then he shot her and then he suddenly puts him in the her in the back of the car just for the heck of it and then he again puts her back puts her in the creeper and then they take her uh, to the burn pit so that she can be burnt whole uh, it's it's ridiculous what his theory is the narrative just doesn't fit that is the point listen I have no issues if the Kratz says that yes, a very is guilty. Fine, you are saying a very is guilty. Give a proper narrative, buddy. Yes, you might have convinced the jury, you might have convinced the judge, uh, who again was part of the county, and uh, you've convinced them all that yes, Stephen is guilty. But to the common man on the street, or to the common American, Indian, anywhere, everywhere in this world. We have watched, we know what happened here. So, we are not stupid, okay? And Candace Owens can scream, can shout, can make convicting a murder, can say star 6-7, can say wearing a towel. He might be the worst monster on earth. Still, the evidence does not fit. It just doesn't fit. It's worse than a Barbara Cartman novel, what you're trying to say here. It just doesn't fit. If we look at all the events leading up to Teresa Hallback's murder and then um, the disposal of the body, Stephen Avery could not have done it just with the aid of his nephew and with so many people surrounding his house. It is impossible. It couldn't have happened at all, as per the narrative of Kratz. If you are saying he committed the murder, better come up with a better story, back to more solid evidence. Not with all this planted evidence, which we know it is planted. Okay? Now, again, some people are saying, hey, this is there, the, uh, the blood is there, How, prove it. How do I prove it, man? How do I prove it? How do I prove something if the police does it? We trust the police. Police is like God to us. So if a crime is committed, if God says, hey, hello, I'm going to do this. It's a cheat, man. How do I prove it? You can't prove it. But there are certain situations or incidents and the pattern, from the pattern you can infer what is happening here. Simple. Seventh search. The key is found. Photographs of the key. Around the key, the surrounding area, it's not disturbed. How did the key just appear? Is it a Houdini act? Just can't. Then, the blood of Stephen Avery in the front and the Teresa Hallback's blood in the back. If you are going ahead and putting the uh, Teresa Hallback at the back of the car and you have a cut finger, there has to be certain blood of yours which should be uh, put uh, there in the carpet area or anywhere but there is nothing in the front of the car what do you see you see a lot of Stephen Avery but and it has been placed strategically it's like when you are watching it it's like I'm watching a CSI movie I'm watching a CSI serial Nothing. And even CSI comes up with a better, better, uh, you know, scene, uh, uh, like, creation, you know. Listen. Very well made show. Convicting a murder. Very well made show. But, guys. 
get a reality check and try and understand exactly what has happened here and uh, i'm saying this why because i think america is a great nation i believe it's an amazing nation and the power of this country are the people are you all each and every one of you all and when i am watching in front of my eyes your rights your powers being snatched by state agencies through deceit undue influence and coercion it is mr shobjani's duty to make you understand it it is for you all it is also for the guilters the guilters keep on saying where is guilty where is guilty where is i tell them think about it steven avery's case has become a precedent god forbid something like this happens to you or your near relative and the possibility is very close it can definitely happen tell me how many guilters are there how many people who believe steven avery is guilty in america probably millions right the chances of one of you getting affected because of the slit of hand by state powers what are the chances definitely it can happen and it is your job to understand these kinds of cases these kinds of situations and fight for these people who are there in the jail fight for them fight for steven avery fight for brendan dacy and it is our duty because not only for our rights but for the memory of this beautiful individual teresa holback again i stress on this fact i don't know what people think or what people understand i am doing this for her we need to find out the truth and we need to put the right people in jail that person has been enjoying this innocent air and freedom for a very long time and that person committed a heinous act and he is out there he has not spent one second in jail or prison and he should be there and it is we owe it to teresa holback that that person is put in jail and steven and brendan is set free because at best brendan again as per even my analysis of the incident he can be an accessory to the fact to the crime nothing more for that he he should not be given such a stern punishment and steven i i believe from the narrative which kratz has stated because i'll follow the narrative of the prosecution right based on which uh, uh steven was convicted i'm not going to go for any other narrative based on the guilt that they say no he steven did this steven did that and then he killed uh, teresa holback sorry i'm going to go by kratz prosecution theory because that is what put him in prison and that does not fit in any angle in any way at all at all so anyways bye stay strong and steven uh, i don't know whether you're watching my video or not i hope you stay strong i hope you're set free soon and uh, i mean to say at least a retrial is very important for the for america i would say this retrial is important for america for the people of america let's see what happens i'm not saying you, i don't know whether you'll be set free or not but a retrial is required on the basis of the evidence which we have at our hands unfortunately since there's so much of evidence and since there's a little bit there's a major amount of state interference it gets very difficult to get to the truth and to get denny suspect sometimes you misidentify people you don't know whether it's ran hilgas or it is scott whether it's uh, bobby daisy the point is not that that is where we are going wrong denny suspects is not the main thing the point here is the narrative which the prosecution cooked up to put steven avery in jail as per the edmunds test you need to look into the narrative of the prosecution and see whether there is some sort of a doubt 
which can be projected and based on that doubt whether a reasonable jury can decide otherwise that is the test not the denny suspects we are getting it completely wrong here we don't have to be agatha christie we don't have to be hercule poirot we don't have to be miss marple or sherlock holmes that we find out who did it we need to say that yes that's the police they need to find out who did it what we need to say is that as per this narrative which states that steven avery killed teresa holback and burnt her whole in the back of his burn pit it doesn't fit based on the evidence which is found and why why it doesn't fit this is the evidence and there was a lot of evidence which the prosecution did not disclose the prosecution did not disclose that the pelvis bone was found in the manitoba uh, county quarry the prosecution did not disclose that there were two more bone piles in the manitoba uh, uh, bone quarry they did not the pelvis bone they said it was found in the randstad quarry right sovinsky's testimony was not disclosed it is a material form of evidence i'm sorry to say the county judge as they have ruled that uh, um, bobby daisy having possession of the car makes no difference it makes a difference because it was found before the actual witness the person who by the hand of god found that car just by walking into the yard so it was put in there by whom then it was put in by bobby daisy if we believe sovinsky and sovinsky has a very detailed affidavit statement which states that yes bobby was standing in front of him and he had to swerve his car to avoid him to move forward and my point here is that if you don't believe sovinsky then why are you believing brendan daisy brendan daisy's confession is even more ridiculous than sovinsky's so you choose to completely go by brendan daisy's confession and the prosecution will say hey we didn't we didn't you know admit it we kind of uh, like uh, threw away the charges against a very based on bobby daisy's confession you were not required to because mr kratz already made a public statement in uh, manitowic and the jury was chosen by, uh, through manitowic so already that story was out so you didn't need to actually go ahead and say that that was not admissible in the trial because the jury would uh, was already swayed by your press statement mr kratz when you said it so it doesn't matter right bobby uh, brendan daisy's confession was taken into consideration to decide steven avery skilled it is a material fact there were a lot of things which actually go ahead and state a mistrial a complete mistrial and it's high time the supreme court of america or somebody just puts their foot forward and says hello this is there's a lot of wrong which has happened here the least this person deserves is a retrial the least he deserves the appeals court should give him a retrial based on which all the expert evidence is put forward based on everything hopefully it opens up the investigation again and then let's take it from there so all this convicting a murderer this that watching it good more i learn facts it's great but it's not going to change my opinion mr miss uh, candace owens it's not going to change my opinion and you've not understood even uh, anything about the case you need to be a lawyer first you know you need to be trained like a lawyer then you'll understand exactly what has happened here and uh, i know the guilters is going to probably slam this video if you watch it but hey i don't care i will state the truth and the truth is steven avery has been framed for a crime he hasn't committed and a retrial is the least that the american judicial system can give him and hopefully you do because if you don't then the famed american criminal jurisprudence justice system is just an illusion 
just an illusion i am i'll be i'm quite amazed if you're not uh, to going ahead and doing this at least uh, set a uh, brandon free i do understand why you're not setting brandon free because if you set brandon free basically you're saying that his confession is not taken into account and that will in turn impact uh steven avery's please because steven avery will say that if he set free then a major part of my uh crime which is charged and for which i have been convicted is based on his words so i should also be set free as a result so that's why it's a kind of a catch 22 situation for the state and that's why they need to keep bobby dc in uh, prison till 41 so that uh they say that yes we've done our share of duty and um steven can just rot in prison so just uh, my perspective again because mr shobjani knows everything i know everything if you like my segment if you like this segment please like share subscribe as much as you want i will be posting another video which will be the dissection of uh brandon dacy's confession and also what could have happened on that day uh in order to explain exactly what might have happened to teresa hallback and uh yes i will try and keep because the problem with um, brandon dacy's confession is it's so layered and there are so many confessions that you really have to kind of uh, uh it 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 is a very very um uh, it's a confusing labyrinth so you have to try and understand exactly what happened because in it you know that there are parts which are true there are parts which are true which which are actually true and uh, what are true what is not and trying to form a whole picture is very difficult it's very difficult but somehow i've been able to understand to a certain extent it's just my perception again you might say that hello how can you be certain about it i know i'm not saying that i am completely certain about it but to a certain extent i'm quite uh, sure about exactly what happened and uh, uh, it was a very it was a to me it was a kind of a spurt crime you know it's it, these kinds of crimes happen suddenly they, they, it, it was there was no premeditation involved and it just happened suddenly and uh, there's even i felt i don't know maybe i'm wrong there's even a chance of an accidental death here i i feel you know it might be wrong i i i might be wrong about it but uh there is a chance of an accidental death also here because that person was trying to shoot some something and teresa came in the middle it, it is just my theory it could be a prop it could be something else but uh just because there are two theories which i have and um, one involves an accidental death thing and so i'll be explaining my theory i'll be doing it and uh, that will require a little more time because i have to be very very uh, careful i know the guilters will be waiting to pounce on me so i want it to be a very very uh tight um theory so that you all can test it from all angles and you can say hey shobjani that's not right and i'm i'm open to suggestions i'm open to everything so that's it um wait for my next video i hope you enjoyed this video dark moon i love you guy because you are the one who actually goes ahead and sends me the most encouragement you know and thanks to you i have i'm making this channel grow and i've got a lot of subscribers now i want more of a very subscribers please like share and subscribe to professor shop jani i will be giving a lot of updates on steven avery what my theories are how they are i'm trying to make it a little more interesting now i know more facets of the case so my earlier videos were not that good but right now i understand all the facts and uh, i can i can actually state the facts and i think i'm making better videos right now and guilters please keep it coming because honestly speaking um i have a love hate relationship with you guys and um i get a lot of information from you guys 
सो प्लीज कीप इट कमिंग मैन एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड से स्टू पिट स्टाफ टू मी अब्यूज मी हेट मी इट्स योर ओपिनियन ओके आई आई हैव नो प्रॉब्लम अबाउट इट ओके एंड कीप सेंडिंग मी इन्फॉर्मेशन बिकॉज इफ यू कैन सेंड मी सम गुड पुलिस ट्रांसक्रिप्ट क्राइम सीन फोटोज एविडेंस सेंग नो दिस इज वॉट आई थिंक इज मेक्स अ वेरी गिल्टी अगेन एट द एंड ऑफ द डे आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू ऑल माई सिंगल माइंडेड परस्यूट इज to find out the truth my single minded pursuit is not to prove a very is innocent but right now based on the evidence i have based on whatever has happened in this case that is the conclusion i can draw but if you can give me facts if you can give me evidence which show otherwise then definitely i can change my opinion in the near future i have no issues with that but that again i'll tell you there are three objectives here the first objective is the pursuit of truth what exactly happened here second is to honor the memory of teresa holback let's not forget her this is not about um B- B- brendan daisy this is not about steven avery because at least they are alive and we are fighting for them this young lady is no more and i do feel that yes she is really no more because the partial dna evidence fitting the profile with her it it's more or less it confirms that she is the person who has passed away so it is to honor the memory of teresa holback and ensure that we really find out what exactly happened to her and to know for certain who actually actually killed her who is the person or who are the people who actually killed teresa holback and thirdly of course out of this whole mess if you find out that yes these two people who have spent nearly half their lives on jail in prison they are innocent please set them free and give them give them the compensation man now it's 36 now let it be 100 million dollars send me 1 million dollar okay <laughs> after all i'm fighting so hard for you very <laughs> just kidding buddy i would just say that if finally you get your retrial Brendan gets the retrial you all are free start your life with a fresh leaf forget whatever you did in the past forget whatever happened and be a good man because life honestly speaking is not short it is long it is how you treat it KFC old man made it happen right at the twilight of his life he became a millionaire so think about that and go ahead bye like share subscribe to mr shopjani bye bye